regardless of how you feel, there are many symptoms that are attributed to potassium deficiency. Uh, let me just talk briefly uh, about potassium. Uh, it's a very important electrolyte. It's a substance that conducts electricity in the body along with sodium chloride, calcium, and magnesium. They do work together. I'm primarily going to talk about potassium. I will talk a little bit about sodium and I'll discuss the differences and on why potassium is thrown off or because sodium potentially is uh, too much in excess. But we know that potassium, we think of like our heart function, uh, the skeletal and smooth muscles. Uh, we look at our muscular function, our digestive system. And I'm going to touch a few points, but I'm going to first mention the three main uh, most important symptoms of uh, potassium deficiency. Now realize that potassium is a key mineral in the body. It relies heavily to function properly. And if it doesn't function properly, we start exhibiting many symptoms. I want to say hello to everyone out there in the chat room. Welcome. Um, but I want you to understand the relevance of how it affects blood pressure, uh, why there are millions of people, not hundreds of thousands, but millions of people worldwide with elevated blood pressure. Uh, this has an effect, direct relationship with the kidneys and how it regulates sodium and potassium, which I'm not going to go into the deep physiology, but I am going to show you a couple important things first, and then I will go into some other aspects of other common symptoms. So let's first go on to uh, this area right here. We call it the heart. Uh, we realize that uh, I have a very dear friend who is a chief cardiologist. And when I go uh, do my stress tests, I'm always hearing him talk in the room. Eat your bananas. Eat your bananas. That's all he used to say. And I always have bananas in my mind. But bananas is a great source of potassium. I will show you other great sources of potassium in a little while. I'm not going to leave that out for you. And I will actually explain to you about how much potassium you should be taking in and why it's better to have potassium through food than a pill. So I don't want you to like rely on, on pills. I want you to really rely on nutrition because nutrition has better balance and you're going to get better assimilation. But uh, in looking at the heart briefly, commonly seen is arrhythmias. If you notice that uh, you, a loved one, a friend, or someone in your family, notice that they complain of a lot of arrhythmias, skipping of beats. Uh, some people feel it more than others, and some people don't feel it at all. But when we get those skipping of beats, very commonly known as deficiency of potassium. Now, we don't want to say that it's all pertaining to a loss of potassium, but it's commonly seen in, in deficiencies because before most doctors, good doctors, they will ask a history of uh, you, the, the medication you're taking, uh, foods that you're eating, uh, and a little bit about you know things you do every day that may be related to lack of potassium. So uh, arrhythmia is very common, and that takes us to the next thing, the brain. Feeling foggy, feeling dizzy, forgetfulness, uh, just kind of foggy where you're just not, you can't concentrate, uh, feeling tired, uh, feeling worn out, feeling stressed. There are many different vocabulary words I can use to describe that, maybe thesaurus words, but the bottom line is you're just not clear. Your focus is not clear. Now, there's a lot of things that can cause this, like hypoglycemia, uh, uh, high blood pressure. There's a lot of things. But they have found, studies have found that low potassium levels has a direct relationship with lack of focus in the brain. Also, if, there, if your uh, potassium levels are low, you will many times see low blood pressure. Uh, and as a result of that, the heart is not functioning as well as it should. Uh, you still can have high blood pressure, but many times you'll see this. But as a result of the arrhythmias, remember, the, the function of the heart is to pump oxygen throughout the body. So if the heart is not working optimally, then the amount of oxygen getting to the cells, particularly the brain, is not optimally functioning as well, which is another reason why. Okay, so 
in all respect, never just base any of your health just on a video or just from my opinion. I would always recommend anyone out there who has any symptoms of any arrhythmias or any fogginess or any conditions that's not going away, always see a physician and get it checked out. And that takes us to our third one. Very, very common. The old muscle cramp. Now, uh, many of us will think of magnesium. Magnesium works with potassium along with sodium and chloride, and it gets a very vicious cycle. But uh, many people who get muscle cramps are dehydrated. Uh, they're overly stressed out. They're o- they're overly uh, they o- may overly work out. Uh, and, and excessively using the muscles too much can cause it to cramp. And obviously, as a result of low potassium levels, that can be one of the forms of common cramping. Now, the reason why I bring this out is that if you are getting cramping, eat a banana. Uh, you know, you may want to take some electrolytes, drink electrolytes. But uh, as a result of the potassium, if you get it in a Gatorade or a, a Power Aid, you're still lacking potassium. It's very, very common and very common with with people who work out in the heat uh, because of the fact you may not feel as if you're thirsty, but your body's losing and it's perspiring and you're losing lots of fluids. So that takes us to the old cramps. Uh, The other thing I want to bring out, because I don't want to miss anything here. There's a few things I want to mention. Let's go back here. Let me just give me a second here. I want to make sure that we're not missing anything here. Uh, Let's go here to the sodium uh, potassium pump. This gets a little complicated. I don't know how many people out there took uh, the old uh, chemistry or physiology. Uh, It gets a little complicated on how the sodium potassium pump works. Uh, But basically what happens is the middle inside of the cells basically is where the potassium is. The outside of the cell wall is the sodium. And here's the issue. This is the big problem. The, The People ask me, is potassium better for you than sodium? No, you have to have equal right amounts. The purpose of the the sodium potassium pump is to have equal levels so things function correctly. But here's the big kicker. The big kicker is that people are snacking on chips, Doritos, and all these high sodium foods. And as a result of that, they're causing a deficiency or changes of the potassium levels. Because as you start taking in more sodium, the water retention in the body starts to increase to help neutralize or balance out that sodium. So as a result of that excessive water content that's being uh, withheld from that extra sodium, we then start developing high blood pressure. Uh, Another big one is swelling because as the sodium goes up, the potassium goes down. On the other hand, and here's a little trick for you, and I thought this was really great, interesting physiology, is that as you feel you have too much sodium in you, increase your potassium. So as you increase your potassium, the kidneys are going to excrete the sodium. Now, obviously, when you have uh, excessive sodium, you are returning, retaining fluid, drink more water. And that's what people don't do. What they do is saying, I'm already filled with water. And if I have more water, I'm going to burst. No, you won't. Your kidneys will act as a diuretic to help naturally through that water, which will flush out the extra sodium. So what I'm telling you is that when you have um, too much sodium, your potassium levels are off. That's one of the reasons why we have have off potassiums. It's just thrown off because of our diets. A lot of the refined foods that we eat is, is ruining our potassiums. So just keep that in mind. Now, another question that comes up is the salt in celery good for you? And, you know, people talk about the salt from the ocean. Is it good for you? Well, the natural salt is good for you. And the bottom line is that salt, when I talk about the celery, it has a diuretic and cleansing properties. Uh, Those um, who have these types of problems, celery is organic. It's natural. It's essential for your health. So people think, I don't want more salt. As long as you're getting the, the right amounts. I'm always a big believer. Anything from the ground, anything from the ocean is healthy for you. Anything that's refined, put together by man, that's when we start having lots of problems. So the right sodium potassium balance, obviously decreasing sodium, increasing potassium intake can help control your blood pressure. So that's why it's important when we talk about blood pressure, increase your potassium. Now, how much potassium should you be getting a day? The the, the recommended allowance is 4,700 milligrams. 4,700 milligrams. And I'm going to go to that in just a second. Uh, Let's go to... uh, Let's see here. Give me a second. 
<clears throat> so I want to come over to, uh, before I come over to the food chart, what I'd like to do with you is I want to go over to the uh, a couple different signs of deficiencies that I think are really important I should, I should bring out with you. Uh, realize that those are the really the most important ones, but other very important ones are fatigueness. Um, high blood pressure is a real common one. Um, and you know, and the, as I said, my cardiologist buddy is, did you eat your bananas? Did you eat your bananas? That's so important. Heart palpitations, we talked about muscle weakness, very common. If you feel a lot of weakness, very common to, to uh, potassium deficiency. Another big one that we, that we talk about is uh, neuritis, uh, paresthesia. When people experience tingling, I hear a lot of people say, you know, I get this tingling in my hands. I have, I have no problem in my neck. I get this tingling in my legs. No problem in your lower back. It's not neuromuscular. It's not coming from the disc. It's not coming from the nerve, but coming from a deficiency of potassium. Now, why am I bringing this out to you? Because if you experience any of these symptoms that I'm talking about, it makes so much sense. Eat bananas and eat these foods I'm about to tell you in just a second. Let's just finish up here. Uh, constipation is another really big one. It affects the, the intestine, low potassium. Uh, obviously, if you're drinking a lot of water and you notice you're getting a lot of fiber and you're doing everything right, but you're still constipated, potentially you are actually uh, losing uh, a potassium. And now you're going you're gonna to ask me, how can I lose potassium? Well, these are the most common ways. The most common ways is, is diuretics. Diuretics, so if you're taking a diuretic for blood pressure, to retain, for retaining fluid, your kidneys uh, is going to put you in what we call hypokalemia. So that is low potassium, and it's most excessively lost from potassium as the kidneys are excre excreting it from the kidneys. The kidneys are excreting the potassium uh, out of, of your, uh, as you urinate. Another big one is diarrhea. And you notice if you are sick, and you had a virus and you're vomiting or you're having diarrhea one, one way, either this way or the other way, you are losing a tremendous amount of potassium. Uh, a very dear friend of mine was in a home and uh, diarrhea all the time. They never put him on IV. He ended up passing away because he was dehydrated and he lost so much potassium and he went into cardiac arrest. True story. Uh, so, if you have these particular situations, using laxatives a lot, maybe you're constipated, uh, drinking alcohol quite often, uh, excessive sweating, uh, vomiting, as we said, even some antibiotic use, but mainly those diuretics, a lot of the diuretics today have potassium in it, but you're still losing potassium because each kidney is going to excrete it a little bit different. So let's go on to the foods as we finish up here. I think this is great information here. Uh, these are the most common foods. They have a, a correlation ratio between potassium and sodium. Don't worry about the other. You can look at the calories if you're concerned, but just look at the first uh, column under potassium. Now look at almonds. That is amazing. 705 uh, and 100 grams, 705 uh, uh, milligrams in there. Uh, your green leafy vegetables, a lot of uh, magnesium and potassium. I really love the green leafy vegetables. Walnuts, kale, bananas, as we said, 358 and one banana. Uh, you could just read over the list from egg whites to collard greens to mackerel to fish to carrots to walnuts. You can come back on this chart and look at this on your own. But I really hope that this made a lot of sense to you. And this is just kind of a, a refresher. I really hope that uh, th you can take this and share this video. Um, you want people to really understand these types of things. I, I think it's so important. You know, we realize we, we eat so many foods, and even though you're taking in these good foods, if you're eating junk foods, you're loading yourself up with, with sodium foods and these chips and these nachos and these other poor uh, processed foods, that will deplete potassium in your body. I just want people to know you can uh, leave your messages. I try to get out there as much as I can on Facebook at Motivational Doc. Uh, the channel, is, that uh, page there is growing tremendously. But uh, I just want you to leave your messages below here because there are thousands of people that read these messages. Uh, I learned so much from you in the chat room and so, many, so much from you uh, people out there in the world who leave these messages. 
And it really gets me to think because, you know, science of nutrition is so big. I invite people out there to check out my channel on self-help videos from sciatica to many on forward head posture to neck problems to neuromuscular problems. A lot of great stuff on there. But most important, I enjoy coming out here and I see these beautiful people out there in the chat room just, you know, coming out, making time, all different times of the day. And I want to thank you from my heart as well. I wish all of you good health, many blessings. Keep up the great work. Stay proactive. And may God bless you. Good night now. Bye-bye.